And we're back, you guys, and let us continue. So I haven't played this game in a while. I have no idea what we were doing last time. So let's check it out. I got some new topics in the board. Kojiro. That something will be... Got a um, round two of the attack game of the goblins. Here's a topic by Natsume, which is a character that we'll be meeting in an area. She's looking for Spiral Edge, which is a um, a rare twin blade weapon. told her where it is and now she's gonna head there. Um, here's more tips on area elements. It's a good thing to know these things because in the end if you do the proper damage for areas using the right spells you'll be able to um, to kill the monsters a lot faster. I usually just let the wave masters uh, do their thing because you know they attack automatically so I assume that they know what they're doing. You just uh, you just use the command magic and they'll just cast a bunch of spells on them on the monsters. These people want to take me to a dangerous area, and I, I really need to level You're up. Ugh. Unless I don't. You're forget. Yeah, unless I don't add them to my party, they won't let me do anything else. These are one of the bad parts of the games right. where the characters sort of make you do things that you don't want to. So it's a real pain. Um. Okay. Let's see. See their equipment. Uh, it's not terrible, I guess. What about him? <laughs> Level one wand. Uh, pretty bad. <laughs> Levels are just so low. I guess I'll have to check if. Enter the keyword for a protected area. It should open the menu to hack the gate. You do know the keywords for a protected area. It was posted on the board. This is basically a. Uh, the keywords are Delta, Closed Oblivious Twin Hill. Tutorial on how to hack gates. So we'll be doing that now for the first time. Just choose the area. Level 10. Damn, we're not gonna survive in this place. Oh. Let's see if I can shoot. Level 5, level 3, okay. Let's see if I can choose a level. Like a level 5 at least. The keyword. She won't let me go anywhere else. Well, let me try this area. But I really doubt that I'll be able to survive in here. So check the gate gate hacking. We only just put the viruses in by pressing the uh See? You oh. need virus cores <laughs> to hack the gates. She's still check the telling gates me what to, to see do. See the type and number of virus cores you need to hack the gate. If you have all of the necessary virus cores, you can fill the gauge and hack the gate. Yeah. After hacking the gate, the virus cores you had will be gone. Mm -hmm. Once you've hacked a gate, that area will be open to anyone. Do you understand? So all we do is press the D-pad up, and that's it.
There must be some kind of secret in these protected areas. That's why they lock it, right? Now I'll see if I can defeat the monsters in this area, because honestly, we're really under level for this place. Especially Elk, which is supposed to be the, the supporting role in this area. Oh man. <laughs> we're so not supposed to be here. Oh, not those monsters. They're the worst. At least that one has an elemental weakness. Oh great. I'm confused. Yeah, these chests are the worst. They just cast confusion on you all the time. They're the worst. Of all the creatures that are in this game, th th these are the ones that I hate the most, these freaking chests. We're having so much trouble just killing this one chest. We're not ready for this area. Look, even Elk has already run out of magic. Um, they don't have any th striking thing, striking skills. Huh? <sighs> what am I gonna do? See if I can. Upgrade this thing. The spring. I'm going to try and, uh, and see if I can, uh, exit this area. <laughs> Looks like a chip. Oh, I got something better. Spark blades. Cool. Alright guys, so I was able to exit the area. And I'm gonna go train in a random area if I can. I don't think they're gonna make me go to that area anymore. Level 7. That's perfect. So I'm gonna level up here, and then I'll meet you guys back at the area that we're supposed to go. Because we're really under level, and we're just not gonna make it. So I'll be here for a while, I'll just clear out this area. Alright guys, and we're back, so I leveled up, now we're at level 10, level 9, almost level 10, so let me clear out this dungeon a little bit. Alright, so here we are on B2, I tried to record on each uh, area, just in case. There's like a cutscene or something. It's so much more easier now that we're leveled up. At least I know for future references when they're trying to make me go to an area, I can always just exit the area afterwards and uh... Oh, there we go. We're, we're there already. And then I can just uh, double up if I'm under leveled. With this, I'll increase attack. Only we only we need it because Elk is a uh, wave master, so he doesn't need uh, his attack power up. He needs magical attack power up. If you approach a magic portal, data bugs will show up. If you data drain those bugs, you can get virus cores from them. There has to be a reason why you have that bracelet. 
You will go there to find out the reason, right? Well, duh. The reason why I have this bracelet? Alright. So here's a data bug. We can't take these, uh... You know, we can't, uh, pretend that they're... Wow. Already. Just a few shots, and she's almost dead. So what I do at first is to keep distance and cast spells on, on data bugs. Because their damage is just so high that if I get close, they'll just kill me like in two, two to three shots, I think. I mean, Mia is supposed to have more defense than me because she's a Blade Master, and look how fast she dies. So I don't stand a chance. That's why I keep the uh, those spells. I, I never sell them. I only sell the. Uh, the, the, the fool, the, the moon, and all those things. But the regular spells, I keep them. Alright, at one point I'll be able to do the... Data Drain. Just gotta keep hitting them. Tension is uh, on Mia, so I can get close and hit him a little bit. Now Mia's acting like a tank. She's got the attention of the boss. Now I got the attention on me. Ow. <laughs> no, he doesn't hit that hard with me. I guess I got a little bit better defense than Mia for some reason. I restored Elk's magic so he can keep casting spells. And you got data dream, baby. <laughs> Boom. The reason the data bugs maintain their forms is that the virus that we absorb are the uh, are really that green thing that is surrounding them, so it's like a shield. So that's the thing we sucked in. If we do another data drain, then his form will change and he'll turn into a like a level one monster. But there's no need to do data drain twice on him, because otherwise you'll lose XP. So it's best to keep him strong like this and defeat him like this. They don't always give you the, the option to, well, they did now, but sometimes they don't. Or you, sometimes you might kill him before you even get the chance. This bracelet actually belongs to my friend. I don't care what happened to you in the past. But I am interested in what you are going to do with the bracelet in the future. Well, that's about it. If there's anything I can do to help you, I'll try my best. Thanks. There's no need to thank me. I'm just doing what I want to do. 
Hey, Mia! Elk always sounds so sad. His personality is sort of from similar to Tsukasa's. I like to think that he's like a parallel to the character. There's always like other parallels, like Black Rose sort of reminds you of Mimiru and so forth. They're different people, They're, they got different uh, personalities, but they're sort of similar. Try me! Janu the Gobbler! One of the four Gob Kings! Oh, he's one of the four Gob Kings. I'm sure he'll be a little tougher, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna use Speed Charm, chase him around, use skills to make him a little. Whoa, that was too fast. <laughs> Stahani wasn't exactly a fluke. I can't believe I lost! I can tell a pizza in 20 seconds! How about you? Ah! That would be a waste of a pizza if you can down it in 20 seconds. I mean, think about it. Shouldn't you be able to enjoy the pizza while you're at it? Man, pizza rules. <laughs> So, the good thing about areas is that they invite you to the, gob the Goblin Challenge is that they have uh, Bronte food, and the best thing is to collect these kinds of foods in, this, in these kinds of areas is that you don't encounter enemies. There'll never be enemies in areas like this. So here we have an Oh No Melon. So it's a good thing to keep track of the areas that the goblins have invited you to to race. You can always just come back. The goblin's not going to be there. There won't be any enemies, so you can always just come here and get the grunty food that you need without having to encounter, um, you know, the the bad guys, the enemies. Hark! He of fair eyes. Let us join in an adventure! He of fair eyes. He's got level 2 axe. Oh! I got something for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sure. I try and keep their equipment updated as best as I can. Because like I said, sometimes they invite you to different things. Near you. Okay. Here I yes, come. you do. <laughs> uh, I think you guys understand what I mean. You too. Wow. <laughs> I'm funny. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Headgear sucks. Wow. Look at all this. Well, that that's good. But most of her gear sucks. I got. The armor for her. Yeah, her armor sucks. Yeah. I got something for ye. Yeah. I'll Later in the game, when when we start getting a lot of rare items and uh, like really high level items, they they don't just say, "Oh, thanks." You know, they they really get surprised by. By what you're giving them. So, uh. I think her legs are also suck, yeah. Yeah? They get, like, really surprised when, when you give them yeah. those kinds of items. Like, they can't believe that you're giving it to them. <laughs> but you really don't have a choice. I mean, imagine if you have in your party a bunch of people who have sucky gear. 
I mean, you might as well have people with good gear. This one has a lot of rep, which is going to be very, very useful for from now on, because it'll cast a uh, rep on everybody. And that's just something that we need desperately. We need a, a healer on a, in our party that can successfully heal everybody instantly. We got some good armor. Remember that the ones that you give to your wave masters don't have a, a, a description on the bottom that says that they can't have it. It's like the only armor they can wear. But it's the kind of armor that you can't use yourself because it's not good for you. You need to use the ones that are not limited to, you know, that the wave masters can't use. That's the, the gear for the. Uh, For the twin blades. I mean, you can use the wave master gear, but it's not recommended. It's not going to provide you the same defense abilities of the of the other kinds of armor. Because twin blades have slightly better defense than than wave masters, but then uh, let's say blade masters or long arms have better better defense than twin blades and then heavy blades have better heavy blades and, and heavy axemen have better defense than than the rest, you know, it just keeps going up. It's a very simple concept and I really like that this game sort of follows the rules of MMORPGs that you always have the uh, the tanks, the DPS, and all that. Only that here, like, everybody can heal themselves. I think I heard that Guild Wars 2 is sort of like that, that everybody can just heal themselves. I really want to play Guild Wars 2, and, uh, that's what, that's why I'm really trying to get a new computer, because I really want to play that game. I mean, that's not the only reason I want a new computer, but... I really want to get into that MMO, because I'm kind of an MMO kind of guy, you know. I like regular games, but the reason I'm more fond of MMOs is that they never end. And especially an MMO that it's a buy-to-play. You can just buy it and then play it for free for the rest of your life. So it's like, you know, it's a really good deal, in my opinion, you know. That's why I always quit WoW, because I'm not really in good terms of paying a monthly fee for a video game. Like, I can't enjoy it, really, if I'm paying almost, you know, like $15 a month. It's just not not cool, I guess. Wow, there's a really noisy car passing by. So, uh, yeah. I'm actually wondering, like, I don't know if I'll be, I don't know if I'll be recording the, uh... Oh god, that's so noisy. I can't really just have a quiet evening that I can record. Um... I think asking a question will continue the conversation. Here's Helba giving more tips about virus cores and all that. That's the servers that you can get the virus cores. Uh, the kinds of monsters that release different kind of virus cores and all that. It's a really good tip that I didn't listen to the first time I played through this game and I was really confused on where to get different kinds of virus cores. And it's something that is going to be extremely useful as we get further in the other volumes of this, these games because at, at, I think that at Dot Hack Quarantine, which is the last volume of this game, 
you're gonna be hacking gates 95% of the time. Like, almost every area that you're gonna visit is always protected. And it's crazy, you need so many virus cores. So I suggest you overpack yourself with every virus course there is before you get to the last game. Just, just pile up with ridiculous amounts of virus cores so that you don't end up having to be grinding for virus cores later on. That's something that I'll definitely do, at least in Outbreak, which is the third volume. I'll definitely do that. So, um, I'm gonna stop here. Because i already gotten past 20 minutes. And I'll see you guys on the next one. So, um... There's, uh... These are just news from the world of the game, you know, they're not real news. Alright. Okay, so that's it for the stuff that to to check out, I think. Yeah. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.